This is a day the Macias family feared would never come. Daniel and his wife Maritza were both diagnosed with COVID-19 in late March, but Daniel's condition quickly worsened. The doctors told us my dad had 20% chance of living. Rushed to Pomona Valley Hospital, he was immediately put on a ventilator. We knew that he would fight with everything in him because how much he loved us. Feeling like the hospital had exhausted every option, the family turned to an experimental treatment, taking plasma rich with antibodies to fight the virus from someone who's recovered and giving it to those who were still battling it. With over 90,000 deaths in 50 states, I was on the ground in Kirkland, Washington as the virus began to spread. We've just seen another person loaded up into this ambulance to be taken to the hospital. This nursing home, the life care facility, the nation's first hotspot. Just days after reporting on this story, I became a part of it. Congested, got a headache right here. I think I've got a lot of quarantine time ahead. After recovering from COVID-19, Good evening. I wanted to help and learned I met the criteria to donate. How many bags do I fill up? The process, painless and taking under two hours. The golden plasma. This is your plasma right here. I just can't believe that I have the ability to do something that could be so helpful. In March, the FDA put out a national call for potential convalescent plasma donors. Now the Mayo Clinic is working with more than 2,000 sites to collect it. And according to the Red Cross, more than 70,000 people have requested to donate through their site. While the, the response has been tremendous, um, qualifying and getting the right donors into uh, our centers to donate is um, one of the biggest hurdles. Doctors say the treatment is experimental and needs further study. We're getting a lot of anecdotal um, you know, reports back from physicians contacting us, uh, family members contacting us. But I think at the end of the day, we need to wait for real data to have a better sense and be able to really say with any confidence uh, that this is working. But some recipients say they owe their lives to it. With the help of the Red Cross, we were able to track my donation right to Daniel. Now home after a 33 day stay in the hospital. The Macias family inviting me to the surprise of a lifetime. Now we are the last car in this parade. There's so many cars. This is incredible. Oh. Thank you, Katie. You gave me something that. Only the Lord can do with you. Thank you very much. I love you. I care for you. Daniel, I love you. This is the greatest honor of my life to be able to do this for you. Daniel and I, who have now both tested negative for coronavirus, embraced with hospital staff nearby. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. Yeah. Really good. It was just right away, the next day, he started doing better. Oh, you could breathe on your own only three days later. She's got another death. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. For watching over you. That is good. You come over, <laughs> you visit, this is your home. A truly remarkable moment. Earlier today, I got a chance to check in with Kaylee. Kaylee, only a tiny fraction of people trying to donate actually meet the current FDA criteria. Why is that? Well, Juju, the concept of convalescent plasma is not a new one, but providing it on the large scale that this pandemic is asking for it, that is. In my case, I needed to provide proof of that original positive COVID test. I needed to be asymptomatic for more than 28 days and then pass a simple health screening that you need to pass before donating blood at any time. The Red Cross tells me that they are actively trying to increase this donor pool, especially given how difficult we know it has been to get a test in this country in the first place and there are many people like you who want to help their fellow citizens now walk us through the donation process you described it as painless 
Relatively speaking, it really was, Juju. It was a pleasant surprise to find that that was the case. I went through that health screening like I mentioned, and then I was in the recliner at the Red Cross for less than an hour. And there are four rounds of the process of that machine drawing your blood out, separating your plasma, and then sending your red blood cells back into your body. Any pain, any discomfort anyone might be fearing, I promise the potential payoff is worth it. And we know that this treatment is still experimental. And yet, what was it like thinking that perhaps you did save someone's life? Well, until we have a vaccine, this is one of the only treatments out there. I spent so much time right here in this apartment, isolated, wanting to do something to help. And I never imagined that this is how the story would unfold. I feel incredibly lucky to now have the Macias family in my life and giving them this gift. Whatever help my plasma was to Daniel Macias, it's been the greatest privilege and honor of my life. Kaylee Hartung, thank you for all you've done. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.